Hello, I'm Richard Lund. I'm on a journey. I'm on a journey to live a healthy hundred years. And to do that, I've incorporated for now the fourth month, a special fasting mimicking diet, redneck version. This is not the excellent product from El Nutra, which is called Prolon. If you've got the money, you can buy theirs. In fact, you should buy theirs. It's really an excellent product, very well tested. Mine, on the other hand, <laughs> has been tested with an N of 1, as they are so kind to say these days. So for this first morning, I eat more this morning. I have the uh, macadamia nuts, which are very high in fat, which is excellent for this particular program, but normally I don't eat them. I managed to get some online. We got nuts.com. I have no idea if they're good or bad or inexpensive or cheap or very expensive. I don't know. So, you know, if you're going to try something like this, you got to source them on your own. Okay, so the second item of the morning, we have some canned spinach. Now, I did buy a bag of fresh spinach last week. Unfortunately, when I went to cook it this morning, it was uh, beyond its time, if you know what I'm saying. So that, that we have. Now, I like the Popeye spinach, which I had never really seen before I started doing this program. But I thought, what a cute, what a cute guy Popeye is. You know, he's, well, anyway, I, Popeye the Sailor Man, it's, you've been there before. The thing I didn't do, I didn't add my nutritional yeast on top of this yet because I wanted to show you something else. Now, at my local sprout store, I got some mustard seed powder. Now, there is an, something in the mustard seed powder that helps this create sulforaphane in our bodies. And I was going to read the words to you and see if I can. I, I know we have something called glucoraphanin, which is in the, the green plant. And if we ate, let's say we ate broccoli or spinach raw, then we would, by chewing it, we would be mixing in an enzyme that would start to break it down and create the sulforaphane. So we have gluc glucoraphanin is what we're looking uh, to change. So myrosinase is the enzyme. And it just so happens that the mustard seed has that in there. So if you have cooked any one of these crucifers and you want to get the maximum benefit out of it, if you haven't cooked it extremely carefully on low, lower temperature, like 60 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, then you can take a little bit of this mustard powder, which is kind of spicy, and you can just sprinkle some on. Now, I didn't put a lot on, but... I know if I want to eat it, even if I'm hungry, I'm going to need a little break. So that, plus then the nutritional yeast, this happens to be from Trader Joe's. I hope you didn't mind that terribly noisy start there. But we have one teaspoon of this, which if you remember back one of my early versions of this, I used a tablespoon, but it was too much because it, it added too much protein. So the goal for this is to provide some B vitamins to the body. Now, I've also learned more information about the, um, the product from, from Prolon. This is someone, I think from Italy or Europe, that has put up a picture of um, NR3, which is a, a basically a supplement capsule of that is provided with Prolon. And at first I thought that this was certain things which would help the body get, get into autophagy and so forth. Certain molecules like uh, green tea extract, the EGCG in that, or blueberries or something like that. And I was using a product uh, that was from Nutristem that had those things in it. And I, I will still probably use that after I finish this particular course of five days. But the whole point of this is, is that it appears that the supplement capsule, at least in this picture that's been provided by somebody who's been using this product, it appears that it really has to do more with vitamin and mineral supplementation, which would be, you know, completing things that people might not have in their diet. Now, I do try to eat a pretty healthy diet, and I, I eat mostly plants, in fact, pretty much all. And then I do take some supplements, I was reviewing that recently. Um, 
These are the ones that I plan to take this morning. I am going to take some magnesium complex. I heard Peter Atia talking about his his nothing burger uh, story, which is kind of a you know he's an interesting fellow who likes to do research on himself, and he had a, a week of ketosis. If you know what that is, it's fine. If you don't, it's okay. And then he had a week of fasting with water and some, I guess, bullion, you know, a kind of a salty mixture. And then the following uh, following week, it was again a, a ketosis uh, uh, eating plan. So it was three weeks of this. And he discussed various things. But one of the supplements that he takes regularly is magnesium, which I think a lot of people do. And then he noted that he was doubling his magnesium intake during his week of fasting because the body tended to get rid of it and also sodium. And I think, I don't know if you mentioned uh, potassium or not, but anyway, so... All I'm trying to say is that the the body would probably tend to use it up a little faster, perhaps. And I'm just taking this anecdotally and saying, maybe I'm going to continue my magnesium. The other cycles I've had, I did not take the magnesium, but I'm going to this week. Another thing I take, uh, and I'm going to continue taking this week because I'm not eating my natto, is uh, vitamin K2. And uh, this one's from Cal, 500 micrograms. Um, not sure if that's the right amount to take. Some some products are much lower, but 45 micrograms or 90 micrograms, like from Yaro. But um, it's the one I take when I'm not doing the the natto. I got some yesterday, so I will be in Fat City next weekend <laughs> with my natto. And I take lion's mane mushroom from Host Defense. This is uh, basically the guy in the U.S. that knows stuff about mushrooms is Paul Stamets, and this is his company. So if I'm going to take a mushroom product, I'm likely to take his. And particularly, he takes this one every day to build his brain. <laughs> Why do I need that? Because I think I need it. <laughs> okay, and the, the fourth thing I'm going to mention this morning is nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN. Now, if you're into, you know, what we're talking about this week, which is helping the body to recognize that it needs uh, to get rid of some stuff, then we learn about the sirtuins, and there'll probably be more that I would say about that at some time in the future. In fact, I will because I've been looking into it. It's really cool. However, um, part of this also is the depletion as we age of the uh, nicotinamide, which is also called vitamin B3, in our body. Uh, and so we have nicotinamide uh, adenine dinucleotide, which is NAD, which is the active molecule that transports electrons from the citric acid cycle directly to the uh, complex one of the oxphos, which is oxidative phosphorylation uh, mechanism in the inner membrane. And it pumps the electrons, the complex one pumps the electrons into the uh, there's a space in there that's called an inner membrane place, space, whatever. So that is part of the en means of energy production. Later on, uh, oxygen is used to combine with those electrons to form water. And the electrons are harvested, the energy from the electrons are harvested and joined with ADP to make ATP. So they, the adding of that phosphate group forms a bond that has energy that can be released when the body needs it, which is like every day all the time and all night. <laughs> every time our, our heart beats, we're using the ATP energy that the heart is creating. So the heart is one of the places where we have a lot of mitochondria. They're being very busy. Another place is the brain. And another place I was listening the other day to someone talk about it, and they were saying the liver is actually has as many mitochondria as do the heart and the brain combined. That liver is one busy beaver, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, okay, so we've got the spinach ready. We've got our, our macadamias measured out. I have my, my Hollywood mug with my ginseng, American ginseng tea. And I think I've bored you enough. <laughs> so, I, I will be running for the fourth time for the most boring person on the internet, and this is my lead-off part of the video. But I'm going to, of course, drag this out over the next several meals. Uh, 
most of the week. Now, there, there's one exception tomorrow. I've been booked for a project. I can't really tell you what it is because most of the time people don't want me to say what I'm working on as an actor. So I'll just say I'm booked. And because of that, I'll be away probably during lunch, possibly dinner time. So I've got to figure out a way to bring my soup and cracker along and make sure I drink plenty of water and tea and maybe a little decaf coffee along the way. So uh, I may not make a video of that particular meal if it's lunch tomorrow or perhaps if it's, you know, through the dinner time. I just don't know when because the way it works is we get what's called a call sheet the night before. And the call sheet will say when we're supposed to show up and, you know, what we're supposed to where perhaps, or some other com comments about that. So that's tomorrow, but this is today. So I'm going to thank you very much for watching. Well, it's happy lunchtime on day one of my fourth month of my fasting mimicking diet, Red Dick version. Today, my, my tomato soup by Dr. McDougall and my Norwegian cracker and some decaf coffee in my Hollywood mug. That is what I'm eating right now for lunch. I did have three green olives as a snack to kind of tide me over until I could get to lunch. Thank you. Well, now it's supper time on day one of my fourth month, a basking, mimicking diet, redneck version. Again, I'm having the rest of the soup from lunch, my cracker, Tonight I'm having hibiscus tea in my Hollywood mug. And I have to say that I'm probably feeling a little weak today. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> Eating so little, but it's good. Thanks for watching. Hey, good morning. It's uh, day two of my fasting mimic and diet, the redneck version. <laughs> And I have my 35 grams of pecans, which is the reduced amount that I use for day two through five. Um, I could use pecans, I could use macadamias. I still have some pecans left from last month and I still have some macadamias left from last month. So um, I think we'll probably have enough to finish out the week. I think the macadamias I had to find online. I'm, I'm not sure if I could have found them locally or not, but I didn't want to that work that hard. And the pecans, I think I did find at a local grocery store. So, in fact, I saw some at the Ralph's the other day. Uh, oh, that's good. And then I have my canned Popeye spinach. And as yesterday, I, I put it on my plate. I sprinkled on some of the mustard seed powder, which is like a spice. And that has an enzyme that helps us get what we need out of the spinach. I mean, beyond other things. There's a lot of things in spinach that are beneficial. And then I put on my nutritional yeast, which in my way is, it's not quite as good as the nutritional supplement that's provided with the Prolon product, but it still does give me a variety of vitamin B3, or I should say the, all of the B vitamins. And uh, that's good. And uh, I have my American ginseng tea in my Hollywood mug. So, that is, and I put two, two tea bags in today, the double, the double whammy, and I enjoy it. And uh, I'm sure there isn't a, a whole lot more calories in two, two, bags, two, two tea bags versus one. You can tell I haven't been talking very long this morning. <laughs> anyway, so uh, it turns out that my uh, gig today is call time at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. over on the west side. So I will uh, get to have lunch at home, which is good. So that I don't have to figure out how to take, you know, uh, two meals with me. Uh, I'll probably have my soup warmed up for the second meal and put it in a small thermos and then bring my single Norwegian cracker and figure out, get some coffee or something when I'm there. So that is it for my breakfast today, except that I also am looking forward to using my glycerin today in my water. Uh, we'll uh, show you that at lunch. Thanks for listening. Well, I made it to lunch on day two of my fasting mimicking diet, redneck version, and today it's uh, a rerun of yesterday. I'm having more tomato soup. That's the one from Dr. McDougall's Right Foods. And uh, this is a cracker, a Norwegian cracker I get from Trader Joe's, as you know. 
Uh, I've still got some American ginseng tea in my Hollywood mug. I probably also make a cup of decaf coffee. I did have two of my shiitake mushrooms come in a jar this morning as a snack because I sort of needed it. And now it's time to mix up the glycerin. Okay, so we've got my bottle of water. And I put a little bit of glycerin in this glass so that I don't pour it all over the table. <laughs> Yeah, you might have imagined that could have happened to me. So I'm not going to measure this precisely, but just say, uh, yeah, it's probably about a tablespoon. No, teaspoon. Five milliliters. It could be wrong. It could be six or seven or four. It's kind of not going to, nobody's going to die. Anyway, and I see some ran down the outside of the bottle. So I'll have to fix that later. So that'll be my sipping on beverage for the afternoon. Thank you very much for listening and uh, we'll see you later. Remembering that the supper time one might not come at supper time or it might not come at all. <laughs> I have to go away from the house to a, to a gig. So, ciao. Well, I made it to supper time for the second day of my fourth month Fasting Mimicking Diet, Redneck version. And it was kind of an interesting day. Uh, it's pretty late now. It's around 8.30. And I usually eat quite a bit earlier. I did take my water bottle, which is now empty, which I had added the glycerin to. And I think that's what got me through. Um, there was some... Uh, well, I'll basically say I was working on a project. I can't tell you what it is. You know, they'll shoot me if they if I said so I'll just say it's just something you know and um, when we got there we waited the, they had a, what's called a holding area in a restaurant and the restaurant wasn't part of the shoot it was just uh, they were just using their space and then the restaurant brought in food for the people there were maybe around 20 people there 25 people um, and of course <laughs> I wasn't going to eat any and I had already told the production I wasn't going to eat any of their food and um, yet it was, you know, it just kept coming. It was the appetizers and then more stuff and more stuff. And it would have been a lot of fun. But I don't, I got through it okay. And I didn't feel like poor me or anything. I just, I'm just glad I had something to sip on with just a little bit of calories in it. That was good. So I got home. I warmed up the soup from the, you know, the second batch from lunch. And I got three of my olives out because I'm going to eat these with dinner. <laughs> I don't eat it right now. Mm. Mm. I didn't realize how wonderful they are. Anyway, well, that's the news. I got some decaf coffee tonight. I got my tomato soup and my, looks like sort of my moth eaten. <laughs> Uh, Norwegian cracker, but uh, I think it just kind of came apart in the bag. That's all I've got to say, except um, I'm glad that I could get through this day and um, I didn't feel weak or too weak to drive or, or too inattentive or anything, so my brain is working fairly well. Usually the hardest time I have is on day three to into day four. Those are the hardest, but uh, just say I'm doing okay, considering I had to wait an extra, you know, a couple, three hours for my evening meal. I think I should shut up. <laughs> You've heard enough. Thanks for watching. Well, here is hump day. <laughs> Breakfast on hump day on my fasting mimicking diet redneck version. I have my standard spinach with some a little bit of mustard powder and then some nutritional yeast put on the top. Uh, it's about a quarter cup of spinach or measured out, uh, drained about uh, 60 grams. And then I've got uh, pecans, uh, 35 grams of pecans. Now, before I go ahead and I, of course, have my Hollywood mug with my uh, American ginseng tea, before I go any further, ta-da! <laughs> Today, 
well, day three was the day, the first time around, when I noticed the taste of acetone in my mouth on the morning of day three. I have been curious about, you know, getting a, a device to measure my either blood sugar or ketones or whatever. And I just thought, well, why spend the money? And then I got to poke myself and get blood. I don't really want to do that. <laughs> Can you tell I don't like pain? I, uh, okay, so I avoid pain and, and seek pleasure and enjoyment. But, you know, I'll, I'm going to do better. Anyway, but here's what happened. Being a boy, you got to buy toys, right? <laughs> so... This is the toy. It's called the Keto Healthcare. What are they called? KHCM3 Ketone Breath Meter. Now, this was about forty bucks. Other ones, you know, are offered not from the U.S., but uh, supposedly to do the same job for about two hundred dollars. And uh, anyway, let me just show you how it works. I have tested this a bunch of times and because I didn't have this until the cycle was over the last time I did it, um, I had tested it and I'd always come up with zero except the first time I got some higher numbers. Now, I don't actually know what the numbers mean. I just know, here's how it works. You push the button and it makes some noise and stuff like that. And then it counts down to uh, from about 20. And there's a little mouthpiece deal you fit on here. And then when it reaches zero, you then have to blow into it for 10 seconds. So I've got to catch up my breath. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I have no, no idea what that means. <laughs> Eight point something. Um, it says 0.8.5 or 0.8.3, some other number. Again, so this isn't necessarily telling me anything except it's just some numbers on a on the display. And uh, the little booklet that comes with it I don't think it says anything about what the actual units are. Um, so that is kind of a downside. <laughs> this is called the user manual. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Only thing it says, breathe from the end of your breath. Do not take a deep breath beforehand. I don't really understand how this works to uh, be able to br breathe strongly for 10 seconds and then to blow into it from the end of your breath. Don't take a deep breath beforehand. Uh, I don't get it. I'm going to try it again just to see. Well, I, I can't get it to turn off, so I don't know if I do that. We'll get back to that some of the day. <laughs> this is the most boring, <laughs> the most boring video on the web this week. <laughs> some guy with a meter he doesn't understand trying to get you to understand it while he doesn't understand it and keeps talking anyway. <laughs> so, some things I find funny, and this probably won't be funny to you, but uh, it's uh, hilarious to me. Thanks so much. Well, I, I always like saying it's hump day, hump lunch. <laughs> this is my uh, third day at lunch for, for my fasting mimicking diet redneck version. And uh, the same boring food I had before, which is actually very tasty. The Norwegian crackers from Trader Joe, I got one of those. Today I've got a bowl of vegetable soup 
This one is from Annie's, which is a different brand than I often use. It's a vegetable soup with farm-shaped pasta. <laughs> what does that mean? It means that they shaped the pasta on a farm, or they made the pasta look like a farm, or I don't know. <laughs> Anybody's guess. Well, I put a couple things out on the table today. I've got a jar of manzanilla olives, which are going to have to replace the ones that I had before because I ate them all. <laughs> And uh, so I just wanted to, you know, kind of remind folks what I'm doing. So this is one thing, olives, as a snack or to tide me over or something. Uh, probably three or four of these smaller olives will do for that. Or maybe a couple of these mushrooms. We got uh, campanon mushrooms. I have no idea what that, if that said, right? But um, when I talk about a jar of mushrooms, that's what I'm talking about. Something like that. You could probably find canned mushrooms somewhere. And there might be various varieties available to you wherever you are, depending what you want to do. So, and I have to say that I haven't really figured out that that uh, meter thing I tried out for breakfast. Um, eventually, you have to blow into it, and then it does a bunch of calculating or numbers jumping around, and then all of a sudden, it comes out with a green light, and then gives you a display. Now, the display I finally got after playing with it was 0.15. 0.15 what? I don't know. <laughs> so I went to their website. They don't describe what that means there either. But they said, well, if it's 0.05, that means you're not quite into ketosis enough. And if it's 0.1, you might want to go further. And if it's above 0.1, or maybe something like that, it, it was it means you're in ketosis. And you could go to 3.0, and that'd be fine, but you don't need to go higher. Something like that. Anyway, so whether it's talking about what they think it's millimolar or some other unit, no idea. And that's it for now. Thanks. Well, I made it to supper on hump day. Uh, I got my cracker. I got my soup. Uh, there's a bunch of peaches hanging out on the table, but I am not going to eat any until Saturday. They came from George Bones Ranch up in or near Pear Blossom, near where I live. Uh, I didn't go there, but my daughter did, and she brought us back some of these, and they're just delicious. Of course, I can't say they're delicious by right now, because I haven't had any, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, not a bad day. A little bit tired, but um, not, not overly so, and uh, a little achy. Maybe that would be the best way to say it. And I, I do have my mug somewhere. <laughs> I have to, have to put some tea or something in it to drink. Thanks for listening. Day four of my fasting mimicking diet, redneck version. And uh, I guess I've figured out this ketone meter, and this morning it says 0 0.20. Again, I have no idea what the units are. It just means it thinks I'm in ketosis. Okay. So, it's nice. <laughs> Again, the, the regular morning breakfast, <laughs> pecans, spinach with some mustard, and uh, nutritional yeast. And my uh, favorite this week is the American ginseng tea. Yesterday in the afternoon, which has usually been my hardest time, that, that day three afternoon into day four, uh, I got a similar feeling as I've had before, where I had kind of chills all across my arms, the back of my arms, the back of my, my shoulders. Uh, just kind of a sensation that came on at a certain time, and it, it just rolled over me and then was gone in a little while. But it kind of told me that something is happening in my body, so I don't need a meter to tell me that my body is changing right now, doing something different right now. Anyway, uh, that's about it for now, uh, except I'm looking forward to a day of some work and perhaps uh, a little rest. Um, everything's going fine. Thank you.
Well, I've made it to uh, lunch on day four of the Fasting Mimicking Diet Redneck version, and I'm today having my tomato soup. I left home this morning, uh, heading out to uh, do a little, uh, it's called ADR. Uh, it's my big automatic or audio dialogue replacement or something like that. Anyway, uh, I was in a movie maybe a few months back that we shot, and they just wanted me to change a line a little bit, uh, add a couple other words. So <laughs> I drove 45 minutes, found a parking place, went in, they were ready for me. So it was all done in five minutes. <laughs> so I ended up at Starbucks with a cup of decaf black. And uh, that was my extra treat. Came home, uh, had a few olives, and went under what I call the hothouse. It's a uh, far infrared emitter. And I've been doing that every day for a month or two. It's uh, very soothing uh, work over this area of my body. Anyway, again, uh, this is the package of grains, seeds and grains crisp bread from Trader Joe's. And it's what I've been using as my, my cracker. I'm one of those per meal when I uh, eat lunch and dinner. And I got my herbal tea, hibiscus today, mixed with the American ginseng from this morning and my tomato soup from Dr. McDougall. That is it for now. Thank you for listening. Well, it's uh, supper time on day four of the Fasting Mimicking Diet Redneck Style. I would have to say been fairly tired this afternoon. Uh, still having the chills sometimes, and pretty achy in my my back, uh, you know the, the rib cage area, uh, not not the spine particularly, more of the ribs. So I feel kind of like I'm being remodeled inside, <laughs> which is actually what's happening. So anyway, have in my my cracker and my bowl of soup. I had uh, three mushrooms earlier this afternoon because I really was hungry. And uh, I'm really looking forward to refeeding on Saturday. So here's my, my, my tea. Um, I don't feel very entertaining. And I'm sure that you're looking at me thinking like, why doesn't he shut up and eat? Let me alone. Thanks for watching. It's a good morning on day five, my fasting mimicking diet red night version. <laughs> anyway, it's been it's been a good week. Uh, definitely felt weaker yesterday, and I I took I took to my bed somewhat uh, early, uh, late afternoon, and got up had some dinner, but decided I really wasn't feeling like working. So I just went back and lay down and watched a little video and eventually decided, yeah, why don't I just go to sleep? Sleep's good. So I've got my toy again. <laughs> um, this morning I took a reading in case it doesn't work <laughs> this time. And uh, it said 0.3. And I, I believe that the units... I've discovered on their website appear to be micrograms per liter. But again, this doesn't really mean anything uh, to me. <laughs> there we are, 0 0.05, which means it's not what it was earlier. Whatever. Um, do not rush out and buy a meter. <laughs> that's my that's my message until I can figure out whether this is actually worth having or not. So that's the Keto Healthcare. Um, they call it the KHCM3 ketone breath meter. Anyway, back to our happy food. Spinach, as usual. Now, you notice I have macadamias back on my plate this morning along with a couple of uh, pecans because I ran out of pecans <laughs> so it's just if this is day five that's not a bad thing 
and I decided to make my morning beverage from the green tea extract that is, uh, anyway, it's, it's from Sprouts and uh, it has a certain amount of EGCG in it. Um, I forgot how much, but I think one thing about <laughs> when I talk on these days, these during this period of time, I'm not sure I make sense. <laughs> and I feel silly sometimes, which is probably good. You know, if you if you feel a little silly once in a while, it could be a good thing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I was going to talk a little more seriously about, you know, what am I doing? Why? First of all, why am I sharing it? And why do I want to live longer? I did get my 23andMe results back in this week. Uh, took quick, quite a while. My daughter gifted me that particular uh, program. And I was hopeful, I suppose, that maybe I'd had the right genes, you know, for some things. Well, it turns out, of course, I have some genes that don't favor some things. But the longevity, some of the, at least one of the longevity SNPs that the single nucleotide single nucleotide, um, I forgot what the P stands for, they can, SNP. Um, at least one of them is for the longevity chain. And I talked about my grandma Thunstead another time. She was the one that turned, I think I turned, I think she turned 101 before she died. And her last 10 years were spent in a nursing home facility, uh, but it was a nice one. Uh, Presbyterian Homes, and it was in uh, a suburb of St. Paul. She had a beautiful view of a lake, and they had nice gardens, good walking paths. Uh, it was a nice place to live, and of course her meals were made for her, and her housekeeping was helped with, you know, uh, she had her own furniture in her room from the time when she'd lived at, at home in, in Wade Park, Minnesota. And uh, she had a good life. Uh, she enjoyed listening to the radio. She enjoyed reading her Bible. She was, uh, for those of you who might be Christians, I don't know. Maybe, maybe most of you listening aren't. Maybe some of you are. I don't know. And I, I don't mean to, uh, you know, it's not... This isn't my preaching channel, <laughs> but I remember her as the lady who would go to the First Baptist Church. Now, she had a history, some of which I won't go into now, because that's not why you've tuned in. But the point of it is, is that in the, in the New Testament, there are a couple of letters that Paul wrote to Timothy. And Timothy had a mother and a grandmother who were also faithful to God. They believed. And I feel like that was my grandmother and my mother in that they, my grandmother on my mother's side, I mean her, am I making any sense? Of course not. <laughs> That's why I'm on the fasting mimicking diet so I can get my brain clear. Timothy had a mother and grandmother who believed and I had at least at least a mother and grandmother who also were followers of Jesus and uh, had an active Christian life, an active spiritual life, were interested in the Bible, interested in the things of God. And that has been a, a real blessing to me in my life. Now, you know, some might have other blessings. Great. Uh, was I blessed with a large inheritance? No. <laughs> that's, that's never been my problem. But I think the inheritance of, of a connection with, with the divine, with, with Jesus, that's, that's worth a lot to me. I have uh, been sidetracked here a little, but to say that uh, I'm looking forward to eating more food tomorrow, but I'm also reminded of tomorrow that in the small church in which I belong, there were two people who will have services tomorrow. I don't know what they took their lives, but they certainly didn't live a hundred years. 
Uh, one of them certainly lived perhaps into his late 70s, early 80s. The other one probably passed away in her 40s or 50s. I'm not sure that either one of them necessarily needed to have that come then. I don't know how to look back on their lives and tell. But death is a certainty, at least so far. And even though I hear some talk about longevity as if they'll never die, I think they will. So I'm glad that that part of my understanding of life is is uh, settled is uh, at peace so when i do when i do go i will uh, hopefully have accomplished more than i have accomplished today in my business life i accomplished a significant position in a very very narrow field within the movie business i made backdrop pictures and I figured out the key to the scale of making backdrop pictures correctly. I don't think anyone else knows that information. So I felt good about that. And now I'm working on wondering about whether we can connect the world of Chinese medicine, of which I know some, a little bit, and the world of pharmacology and pharmacognosy, which is the Pharmacognosy is the study of the natural world looking for medicines. Pharmacology is a, of how they function in the body. I hope to somehow connect those. And I'll, I'll make a video sometime in the near future talking about a couple of the things that I've discovered just on the shelf of my Chinese medicine store that I go to that may help people live longer. In fact, people do take these in order to live longer. But we'll talk about that later. Thanks for watching. Well, here we are at lunchtime. Day five, yay! <laughs> Fasting mimicking diet redneck version. Today I'm having some more of that Annie's vegetable soup. Uh, I guess the, the little guys in here are supposed to be pictures of sheep or barns or whatever farm animals in the macaroni. <laughs> yeah, I wish there were potatoes instead. But anyway, I, I didn't, I don't, I don't have to buy any more. Anyway, so here's the um, cracker, ginseng tea. Um, let's see, I was going to say something positive. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> uh, there goes the memory. Anyway. So I'm looking forward tomorrow I get to eat the peaches we bought. I also picked some goji berries and I'll be able to eat those. I did have a, about five of them today. So that's my confession. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Well, I made it. It's supper time. Day five of the Fasting Mimic and Diet Redneck version. I want to say thank you for paying attention, and uh, if you've gotten to this point, boy, you are a kind soul. Uh, tonight, my famous Norwegian cracker, in this case Annie's vegetable soup, farm animal shapes on the macaroni, and American ginseng tea in my Hollywood mug. Um, I've done fairly well this week. I have had similar experiences to my other three cycles. I have had uh, some chills across my arms and, and back. Uh, today and yesterday I've had some uh, discomfort, pain, if you will, uh, in the back of my, my thorax, not not the spine, but more more around the ribcage areas. I've had some uh, discomfort up here on this side. I think that my energy has been reasonable, although it has certainly been, I have been weaker as I have the other cycles, like, like the other cycles. And uh, mental clarity is, is okay, but not, as, as you could tell by watching, it's not perfect. I have slept better, not perfectly, but better this cycle than the other cycles. And for that, I'm thankful. 
I'm thankful for the inspiration to live a good long time from my mom and my grandma. And um, my mom's still with us. <laughs> She's 90 years old. And her mom lived to be about 101. So we'll see. Maybe, maybe she'll beat her mom in her longevity. And I'm happy to report that I'm, I'm going to try doing what I can. So I need to wish you all a healthy hundred years. May you enjoy each one. And may your life get better as you age. Think toward the investments that have been made in our lives as we, as we grow up and live. There is a scene in The Blade Runner where the replicant played by, uh, I was going to say the Scandinavian fellow, can't think of his name right now. He's on the roof of a building and Decker, the character, is thinking that he's going to be killed by this replicant. And what happens is the replicant realizes that it's the end of his four-year lifespan. He talks about some of the things that he's seen, and then he uses the term, they will become tears, like tears in rain. The fluid that comes from our eyes, if we were in the rain, would be washed away and mixed with all the other water. And the idea behind that phrase, I believe, is that our human experiences and our relationships and our own history all matter to us a great deal, and they should. And they should matter to our fellows, those especially that we know, that we talk to, that we love, that we interrelate, with whom we live, and to our children and their offspring, and perhaps to our parents. So, for me, to live longer is to say that there is a great value in what I have learned so far. Great value in what I've done. It doesn't mean that it's more valuable than someone else. It's not. But it's, it's a real value. And what I can continue to add to that, and perhaps what I can achieve because I'm added, adding to value, adding to things I've already learned, to add more things. Instead of having to take, you know, roughly 20 years to become a mature person and be educated, and of course, some people extend their education far beyond the 20 years, that those things learned should have a place in our world. Why should we, why should we just say, oh, well, that was, the, that was the 70 years I lived. Uh, tough. Goodbye. Rather than take maybe another 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 years more to produce good things, to write or to uh, invent or to establish or just to encourage. All those things are valuable. And that's what I want to do with my life. And I'm sure that as you would have those same value added to your years that you would also contribute. So, a healthy hundred years. So long. Till next time, Richard Lund saying goodbye.